Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for September 23rd, 2020. Well, yesterday we had kind of a volatile, tumultuous session, but ended the day with the tech sector and really the big techs leading the way for a relief rally, providing that little bit of relief and breaking a four day sell off in the market. We had a couple things yesterday after the bell that may help improve things or remove some of those uncertainties in the market. First, we had um, um, Nike um, just blow out earnings yesterday um, after the bell. Huge gain this morning in that stock. And we had the House pass a, a spending bill that will um, prevent a government shutdown should it be approved by the Senate and signed by the President. So one of those little uncertainties may be coming off. However, we reached a new grim world record here in the United States with more than 200,000 Americans having died due to COVID-19. And unfortunately, those numbers are starting to perk back up again. And as this percolates um, out there, um, there may be some rising concern and uncertainty about what this means for this fall and into this winter. So pretty, pretty interesting uh, day overall. And this morning, we're trying to show some bullishness this morning perking up. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, buckle up, and let's get ready for the hump day edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, guys, we have futures looking positive. Overnight, we had Asian stocks mostly up with um, Australia gaining substantially. European stocks this morning ahead of some key economic data are looking very bullish this morning. And we're seeing a substantial gap up this morning as well. But one thing I want to point out, and we want to be really, really careful um, with this, um, it's, it's pretty common when we see this bullishness to get that fear of missing out. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to hurry up and jump or race or chase into the market. And I want to caution everyone on that this morning. And I want to point out a key, couple of key things that are very important. Um, when we look at um, a downtrend in a chart and we're rallying back toward that, and we also place a price resistance in the chart here, this would be one of the most uncertain places to be buying in the market that I can find in a chart. We want to be buying stocks at or near price support. We don't want to be buying stocks at or near price resistance. Now, obviously, I'm pointing out in an, in, an index, and there are certainly stocks in the market right now showing good buy signals that are holding at support levels. So I don't want to give you the impression that the whole market is bad, but I want to point out the dangers of chasing stocks right into price resistance. Um, let me point this out right here. There was a chase, a day of a chase, right into price resistance of the downtrend and price resistance in the chart. And you can see how that turned out. So one of the things we wanna be really, really careful with is rushing in blindly with that fear of missing out and ending up catching the market right at the point where it could pull back. So watch that carefully, be very, very cautious on how you move forward. Certainly, um, the rally was nice yesterday, but it really hasn't improved anything technically in these charts. If we take a look at our moving averages, we are still below our 50-day moving average. Our 8 exponential, 34 EMA, are starting to line up in this area along with the price resistance to provide a little technical resistance in the chart. So we'll want to watch that carefully as we approach, and for that potential, that's where we could 
run into resistance and possibly fail. So be careful uh, chasing in there. Technicals have yet to improve here in the chart. We are still downtrending. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, very much same situation, rallying up here um, into price resistance levels. Notice that the 8 EMA and the 34 EMA have lined up here to provide some resistance. This is a very, very common pattern. This was um, given a name by a great trader um, who has now passed away, but a great trader by the name of David Elliott, where he called this a blue ice failure. Now, a blue ice failure pattern is when the market fails. And he called this blue ice because so many people use the blue color for their 50-day uh, moving average. He called it the blue ice that we're moving along, walking along on top of the ice, and suddenly we fall through. Um, uh, ice gives way, we break through. We struggle, we push, we do everything we can to push back up here, try to break back through that ice. But unfortunately, the hole we fell through has already passed. And um, the possibility of us bumping our head here and then uh, moving on lower, drowning, um, uh, is the way he would describe it and we would hit that 50-day moving average and then start to progress down toward that 200-day moving average so keep in mind blue ice failure pattern can be a very dangerous pattern if you go back and look at other failure patterns you can see how um, that works and it works very very well um, often so we want to be cautious as we approach that area and approach that downtrend in the chart just be careful not to be racing in or changing Chasing in at those levels. I hate to see uh, folks watching this video be the contributors to, to the market as we pop up and if those institutions decide to reverse that uh, very quickly on the day. Let's take a look at uh, the NASDAQ. NASDAQ also pushing up into that 50-day resistance. Now we're trying to push up here and we will try to break through this morning. We'll see if we can actually do that. But obviously the NASDAQ has been the leader um, to the downside in here. So we're gonna wanna watch that resistance level as we push up into here, push these resistance price levels in the chart. Be careful chasing into this morning's move. And then if we look at IWM, IWM certainly is not in a bullish pattern haven't broken its 50-day moving average, broken its 50-day or 500-day moving average. And um, although we did get a little bit of relief yesterday, it was unable to even break back above its 500-day. So we're still in a downtrend. We still have this failure hot top up here and a significant level of resistance in price that we need to recover from. So a lot of work may need to be done here before um, we can really sound the all clear and be rushing back into trades. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now the VIX pulled back nicely yesterday. We're, we pushed up above that 200 day moving average. We have pulled back sufficiently on that. That's nice to see that a little bit of fear has dropped out of the market, but let's um, admit that we are still significantly elevated in the VIX, making this a relatively dangerous market to be in. If we happen to find price resistance right or price support right along this area, holding that 50-day moving average and push back up here, we could certainly get that fear spike coming in the market. So watch it careful. It would be nice, would be nice this morning if we push on down and actually fail that 50 day moving average. But right now we have really, really struggled with that. So let's be um, on our toes um, and not be blinded by the bullish gap this morning and be looking closely at that price action, setting our trades carefully and following our trading plan. Let's take a look at T2122. Now, T2122 saw a nice little rally yesterday, 
um, early in the day and then we kind of sank back down and what that really means is the majority of stocks were not rising yesterday they were either kind of grinding sideways or going down and the big tech uh, kind of um, held up the indexes overall so as you can see t2122 is showing us that we're still down here in our um, reversal zone in the chart which is a good sign for us um, for those of us that want to see the market um, continue you this relief rally so we have plenty of room for the upside move now this big gap up this morning you know I hate the market that's all or nothing um, notice that the biggest moves of the day that we've had here recently is in the gap um, and we're gapping up big so we're getting that all big surge up which could be the top of the morning we'll want to watch that if we top out first thing if there's no follow-through buying there then we'll surge up and that's where it may end so be really really careful here we do show upside potential here in t2122 also if we take a look at t2101 a little bit disappointing yesterday um, that we really didn't see good follow through on the buy side here in T2101. We um, seem to be gaining ground in market breadth when we sell the market off. We're not gaining so much ground when we see buying coming in. So be really careful. That may be a red flag. We'll want to watch that pretty carefully. Let's take a look at our economic calendar today. Our economic calendar does have a couple things we want to be paying attention to for today, but overall it's a relatively light calendar and we'll want to be um, just kind of keeping our eye on this. First off, we have Jerome Powell once again testifying in Congress. Um, he'll be out there talking. I doubt we learn anything more than what we learned yesterday, but you always want to pay attention when the Fed chair has something to say because um, the market will definitely respond to that if they learn anything new. Let's also keep in mind that we have the EIA Petroleum Status Report today. Could help move the market a little bit if we see a decline in supplies. Um, could help giving uh, to give those energy stocks a little bit of boost. We'll see. However, if we happen to see a increase in those supplies, could have the opposite effect, um, pushing that oil sector even lower. Let's take a look. We also have a big day, a parade of Fed speak going on here. Um, so we'll want to pay attention to that and just keep in mind that anytime um, one of the Fed speakers um, utter something that uh, could be potentially market moving, um, we can get a, uh, a lot of price action in that chart. So watch it or in the chart. So watch that carefully. We also want to be taking a look at our earnings calendar today. We don't have a whole lot of companies reporting earnings, but we do have a few notables uh, today to be made aware of. We have about 12 companies reporting um, overall and we want to pay attention to a few of these. Now I'm going to uh, report on uh, and mention this early um, in the video today uh, Nike. Nike just blew out earnings yesterday. This thing is gapping way up this morning maybe 10-12% higher here on its earnings report. So that certainly is a good sign if uh, folks are continuing to buy um, that athletic gear. Um, that means they're getting out and, and able to enjoy that healthy lifestyle, but kind of keep an eye on that. Um, CTAS will be reporting today. We'll want to keep an eye on CTAS. It looks like um, it pushed up early here this morning. By the way, this candle here is um, what's happening in the pre-market. So um, looks like it gapped up here big, but it's pulling back pretty sharply at the moment. We'll want to keep an eye on Cintas. Um, GIS, General Mills, will be reporting today, also gapping up, pulling back. Uh, General Mills has been in a bit of a downtrend here, not looking so good, so watch that closely. JKS. Um, solar has been really strong here recently and some pretty good names have been moving up solidly and we can see JKS has breaking out of some or trying to break out of some resistance highs on its move this morning so let's watch that close JKS might be one to pay attention to and WOR WOR also something somewhat notable 
And I've been seeing some good responses in that steel um, in that steel sector. Some of those um, stocks starting to perk up here. So let's watch that carefully. Keep an eye on WOR as it reports today. So with that, everyone, how about we take a look at some stocks that are setting up? But before we do that, if you guys could do me a favor, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon, um, when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. Hey everyone, we're getting close to 15,000 subscribers. I want to say thank you so much. Um, we're growing toward that number. It's just um, remarkable. I had no idea when I started this that there would be that many people interested in uh, market uh, a market video like this, but I'm certainly humbled by the fact that you are. And I want to say thank you to everyone who takes the time to click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment, and shares this video out on social media. That helps us grow a ton, and I just want to say thank you so much. You guys are truly, truly awesome. Um, thanks for all of the uh, support of this channel and the effort that it takes to put out this daily video. Um, it means an awful lot to me. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up and remember guys that um, in any of these stocks it's not a recommendation to buy or sell any security it is um, extremely important that everyone do your own due diligence determine whether or not um, a trade fits you personally and um, you'll want to take a close look at those and evaluate those on your merit um, and your trading plan. Let's take a look at FDX. Now FDX is a really nice looking chart in my opinion. There's been some um, positive reports out there. Um, there was a story that I saw that someone is suggesting FDX um, has a path to $500. And I got to tell you, this is a pretty bullish pattern that we see here, moving up, breaking through some resistance areas, pulling back. Notice that it really didn't participate in the sell-off in the market, holding up nicely and trying to show that bullish move to the upside. Yesterday was a legitimate entry signal, and we're, it looks like we're following on through this morning. Now, I won't be at all surprised if this has to just kind of dally along here rest over here toward the trend a little bit more but we should keep an eye on that chart looking pretty good overall let's also keep a close eye on ups ups has been quite strong and something we want to pay attention to in these charts looking pretty good holding up in the support areas now it does have a little bit more consolidation than it needs over toward that trend um, this pink line up here is an alert that i've been paying attention to i'll be watching that closely if that can push on through so keep a close eye on that looking pretty good overall take a look at nio now this guy has been consolidating dancing around in this area and honestly this is a pretty nice tight consolidation it's a pattern that I call pop out of the box and I like these little patterns where we set this nice little tight consolidating range it's telling us that there's no buyers above this area there's no sellers below this area and because we're in an uptrend I will be favoring an upside potential pop so watch that closely if NIO finally gets its act together finds that energy and it may do that uh, you know on a day like today with all the bullishness we may find that energy to push on through and pop on up look Looking pretty good here on NIO. Keep a close eye on that stock. Um, other stocks out there to maybe pay attention to, and there are a few that are starting to show a few signs. And one area that has been perking up here a little bit is retail. We obviously saw that in um, Nike producing really well, and that may help some of other retail stocks move up. And as you can see, Walmart here has had this long pullback. Remember, they caught some upgrades. They have their new membership program underway. I think there's a path here considerably higher on Walmart. I wouldn't want to rush into this. I think there is still a tremendous chance that this could consolidate um, a little bit more. But let's watch that carefully. This um, earnings, uh, this was a big pop on earnings, and you can see that we've pulled that back substantially. So this may be an opportunity to start looking at Walmart. Keep a close eye on it. Walmart trying to come back around and show some signs of upside um, in the charts. 
Um, as you guys know, I've been keeping an eye on McDonald's. Now, McDonald's had a pretty rough showing during the sell-off here in the market. But I think it's somewhat notable that McDonald's, even though we broke down below this support, we really haven't seen any follow-through selling since that point. What I'll want to be watching for here on McDonald's is a recovery of that resistance area. Now, if we can push this back up, if we can recover that area and then hold it as support, there may be an upside opportunity in here. And remember, guys, that's one of my rules. It doesn't have to be one of your rules, but it's one of my rules. If a stock has failed a price support, say we have a stock with a price support here, the price action of that stock is up in this area, and then we get a sell-off or in the market or the stock itself as we sell off and break that support level I am not interested in that trade and the reason is is because this is the potential beginning of a downtrend any rally back to that resistance point sets up the opportunity for that failure pattern so when I'm looking at a chart like that I want to see the pattern like this if we're going to break down from that support rally back above, prove that you can hold after regaining that support, then I'm looking at entering that trade. And what this is, guys, is more about just following the price action of the chart than trying to always pick bottoms and tops and trying to predict which way the market's going to go. And if you guys take a look at your accounts, you're gonna find that that's a pretty tough business to be in um, when you're trying to predict the direction of the stock. If we just wait for the market to show us those directions, you have a better winning ratio. At least that's what I've found in my 15 years of full-time trading. If I'm just patient and wait for the trade, I don't have to guess and I don't have to uh, try to predict directions of the market. So hopefully that was helpful. A few stocks for you to look at. I want to wish everyone a fantastic day. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here on this hump day. Everyone be safe. Be careful with those coronavirus numbers kicking up. Protect yourself. Let's not, I don't want to see folks um, uh, that watch this channel be getting sick and um, uh, with that coronavirus. So be really, really careful out there. Be safe. We'll talk to you all soon, bright and early Thursday morning. Have a great day, everyone.